Highlight Timelapse 11 brings many new features, better performance, and improved user interface. And one feature that has been missing since like 2015. Of course, I'm talking about. Let's watch the video, won't we? First of all, again, I improved the performance. I introduced kind of proxy caching, which will be totally transparent for you, but it will help to speed up the processes of loading the sequences and especially creating visual previews and also deflicker and multipass deflicker. This means all of those processes that take a long time will now be significantly faster, like 50% faster in many cases. Lightroom's HDR feature that has been introduced in one of the latest Lightroom Classic versions, which really allows to work with true HDR photos. Of course, you will need an HDR monitor to edit them, but if you have one and you want to produce HDR videos, LR Timelapse now covers the whole process. It will take the HDR photos from Lightroom and you will end up with an HDR video that you can upload to YouTube or process further in any video editor and you will get a true HDR time-lapse that you can play on an HDR capable television and get that wider dynamic range there. In the past, when using the Holy Grail wizard to level those Holy Grail adjustments, you always had to move the curve, like rotate. In LR Timelapse 7 now, you will have this optimize button. If you click it, it will automatically calculate the right settings for the curve. This will work in 99.9% .9 of all cases perfectly, but you still have the sliders to do some optimizations. And also when you edit a sequence for the first time and activate the Holy Grail wizard for the very first time, then it will automatically apply this optimization. So normally when editing a Holy Grail sequence now, you don't need to do anything but just clicking on the Holy Grail wizard once. Also, you can now visually edit the crop in the internal editor. So let's say you have this finished sequence and decide you would like to crop in a little bit. Then now you can find kind of a crop tool here in the visual editor. But if you click it, you will only get a short instruction on how to do it. It will tell you that you need to hold your shift key and then you can just visually drag up this blue a rectangle which stays in the current aspect ratio. If you release your mouse, then it will recalculate the visual preview for this image with the crop applied. And of course, after this, you would need to apply the auto transition to bring that crop to all the images. And if you want to remove that crop, hold shift again and double click into the preview and it will remove the crop. This also works in the camera preview mode before you even have developed your visual previews. Also now in the internal editor, you have this plus and minus buttons for every tool. And if you click, then you will be able to make very fine adjustments with every click. Of course, a lot of time that we will redevelop the visual preview. By default, the adjustments are very, very small. So then you can add the shift key the adjustments will get a little bit bigger. And if you add the control or on Mac command key, then you will have even bigger adjustments. That way you can do very fine edits in the visual editor. Speaking about the user interface, it's completely new. I redid all the icons. They are scalable SVG now. That means they are vector icons that scale perfectly on different resolutions and DPI settings. And also all the dialogues have been reworked and everything looks way more modern. And you will notice this all the time when working with LR Timelapse 7. The directory choosers were also an area where I spent a lot of time improving them. They were working kind of okay in former versions, but especially if you had slower network drives connected, they could sometimes block the launching process of LR Timelapse and also the workflows. The new directory chooser now works much faster. The preview overlays load much faster. Also, the whole launch process of LR Timelapse is much faster now because loading the directory chooser won't block the launch process of LR Timelapse anymore. If you're working on slower drives that the numbers here, for example, the image count, they will 
gradually appear after everything has been loaded, but you don't need to wait for that. It will happen in background, also the workflow indicators and so on. This all will happen in background now. By the way, I tried to make the workflow indicators a little bit narrower so that you have more space for the folder name. That's why I combined the keyframes and holy grail icons to one icon and everything is now a little bit narrower. One huge change to the directory chooser is also that it will auto update. If you change anything from externally, for example, you add new folders or you rename folders, um, it will automatically be detected here and reflected in the folder tree of LR Time Labs now. Former versions, we had that small refresh buttons here in the directory choosers, which you had to click. But now that isn't necessary anymore in 99.9% .9 of all cases. There might be situations where you connect a new network drive or a new USB drive, which wouldn't be picked up automatically. In such cases, you can still right click in the tree and refresh the directory chooser manually. Another cool feature, if you work with restricted folders like I do here. I only have a subset of folders defined in my settings where I have my time lapses and I only let other time lapse load those folders. So if you do that, you can now right click here anywhere in the tree and add a new folder to your list of restricted folders. Then you can just choose any other folder and have it added, then it will automatically be added to your folder tree. And this is much easier than having to go to the settings every time to change this. Speaking about the settings, there are many settings now that you can change without having to restart LR time lapse. For example, again, if you change your restricted folders like we just did it externally and you want to remove this new folder that we just added, we can do so just click on OK and the folder will be removed. There's no message anymore that will tell you to restart LR time lapse for the changes to take effect. I'd say 80% of all settings don't need a restart anymore. And for the other 20% that might require a restart, you will get a notice like you're used to. Ta-da! JPEG visual editing. That's what many of you I know have been waiting for since years. And now it's here in LR Time Lab 7. We can do the same editing on JPEG files now that we are able to do on RAW files, of course, with the limitations of the JPEGs. But we can now use the visual editor inside LR Time Labs. We can use the visual deflicker. We can do multi pass deflicker. Everything also now on JPEG files without having to manually convert them to GNG files like it was necessary in former versions of LR time lapse. And that could have been done now not because of Adobe lifting their technical restrictions that prevented me from implementing this for years. No, this could have been done because of one guy Daniel Vogelbacher, who is the author of DNG Lab, a great open source tool for DNG editing. And Daniel was so kind to implement a special feature into DNG Lab, which allows me now to use DNG Lab to do all the background stuff that is required for you to have a very, very streamlined workflow now also for JPEG files. Personally, I don't work much with JPEGs when doing time lapse because I see all the advantages of raw files. And of course, I recommend working with raw files whenever you can. But of course, I can see the point that people, for example, that are doing construction time lapses with cameras that cannot shoot raw or with action cameras or whatever, where you are forced to use JPEGs. Of course, that's a big thing now to have this full support in LR time lapse. And if you are one of those who take that big profit, I would really, really ask you to give a shout out to Daniel. He has an Amazon wish list, for example, or he takes a, a PayPal donation. Of course, I already donated to him to thank for his great work. But if you would like 
to say thank you to him. I'm sure he would appreciate it very much. This is a JPEG sequence from a TK camera, which is a solar powered panoramic camera that will mostly be used for construction sites. And as you can see here, we don't have the different workflow tabs anymore, which distinguished between visual workflow and uh, JPEG workflow. No, it's all one workflow now, and you can edit this JPEG sequence exactly as you are used to from raw sequences, create your keyframes, and now we can already click on save and we'll get a developed first image with a visual preview and the last image also. So now you can use the internal editor to do your edits, then sync those to the last keyframe, change something if you need to, apply your auto transition, wait for the visual previews to have been generated, apply your visual deflicker. Perfect, now we have a edited, keyframed and deflickered JPEG sequence, much easier than having to convert that to DNG first. Of course, the JPEG workflow works with the internal editor as you saw it now, but also with the Lightroom workflow. In the render module, I also implemented a couple of improvements. If you choose to use the internal export and render now for a JPEG sequence, you can of course export and render that edited sequence, but you also have the option to do a direct JPEG render, which would just assemble the original unedited JPEG files. You get kind of a warning here. This means that now you're not exporting the nice edits that we did, but the original files. While you're in export and render mode, you can also switch the loaded folder in the main window and the render dialog will pick up that new folder allowing you to render that. This might also be useful to quickly add a couple of render tasks to your batch processing. By the way, have you noticed the new splash screen? That one has not been shot by me. Some of you might have guessed it has been shot by the one and only Michael Binsky and I couldn't be happier that he provided that sequence to me to be used as splash screen in LR Timelapse 7 because he is truly the master of storm timelapse. If you ever have the chance to book a workshop with him, definitely go for it and also check out his films. They are linked on the demo page on lrtimelapse.com also. Guys, this was only the tip of the iceberg regarding the new features and improvements in LR Timelapse 7. There is a big list of changes that you can check out, but you don't have to. Just start working with LR Timelapse 7, check out the demo version or upgrade your license. Just have fun using it, and if you have any questions, come to my forum. This video was not intended to be a tutorial for LR Timelapse. I will be upgrading all the tutorials for LR Timelapse 7, but of course that will take a little bit of time. So best make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get a notification whenever a new tutorial has been released. Until then, enjoy your time lapses. It's such a beautiful art form and editing is so much fun now with the new and faster LR Timelapse 7. Enjoy and see you next time. Bye bye.